Good evening. For years we worried that the likes of Google, Microsoft and Facebook knew too much about us. But when the American intelligence contractor Edward Snowden revealed a list of secret programs the US and British intelligence services have been working on, it seemed the state had amassed a capability beyond all expectations, intercepting and storing vast amounts of everyday internet traffic. The power and scale of the intelligence gathering surprised many concerned about the level of intrusion it represented. But should we be worried? Given the vast amount of data generated online, is it any wonder they require the most powerful systems to find the pieces of information that might, say, prevent a terrorist attack? But just how much state intelligence gathering are we prepared to accept? Here's the BBC security correspondent, Gordon Carrera. Piece by piece over the last few months, we've got glimpses of something that was previously hidden. Top secret documents leaked by former American intelligence analyst Edward Snowden have revealed a huge web of intelligence gathering run by Britain's GCHQ and America's NSA. Even if you're not doing anything wrong, you're being watched and recorded. This is the truth, this is what's happening. You should decide whether we need to be doing this. You have to have a powerful capability to find the small amount that you're looking for. And it doesn't mean that the state is reading everyone's emails. The NSA's actions have more than undermined internet security. Um, they have threatened to break the internet. In the same way technology has transformed our daily lives, it's revolutionized the world of intelligence. The way in which modern communications flow is dizzyingly complex. I might send an email to someone from my phone using software provided by a company like Google's Gmail or Microsoft's Hotmail. The data will be broken up into tiny packets which might travel along an international fibre optic cable, part of a global telecoms infrastructure. The message might also be encrypted by a company's complex algorithm designed to make sure no one can read it along its journey until it reaches the person whom it's addressed to. What we've learned from the Edward Snowden revelations is that America's NSA and Britain's GCHQ are developing the capability to target communications at every point along the route. The NSA has a program called PRISM which allows it to get hold of data from software companies like Microsoft and Google. Under Tempora, GCHQ is tapping the international fibre optic cables through which vast amounts of data and individual messages pass. And the two intelligence agencies are working to crack the secret encryption codes so that they can read messages which other people thought were secret. They also hoover up a huge amount of information about communications, so-called metadata, which they can then sift and analyse, looking for patterns and connections. The overall ambition is enormous, to be able to reach into the global stream of digital communications and pluck out a single message and then read it. So, with so much of our lives online leaving a digital trail behind, has the state, without anyone knowing, become Big Brother? Uh, a little over one month ago, I had a family, a home in paradise. That's what Edward Snowden believed. He's now in hiding in Russia. A hero to some, a villain to others. How you see him depends on how surprised and how outraged you are by what he's revealed. Thanks to Edward Snowden, The Guardian has got hold of a massive trove of top secret documents from the NSA, as well as 58,000 from Britain's GCHQ. So far it's published just a few excerpts. In the last week I've been given direct access to a small selection of original documents held outside the UK. These form the basis of some of the stories The Guardian has already published. The capabilities they reveal and the secrets they contain make clear the very real issues in balancing the public interest with national security. Those who've worked inside the secret state though say that this power is vital for national security 
and is used only for national security. What the state needs and law enforcement needs is the possibility of accessing the communications of the terrorists, the criminals, the kidnappers, the proliferators, the paedophiles. But those communications are all mixed up with everyone else's communications. There are 204 million emails a minute buzzing around the globe. So you have to have a powerful capability to find the small amount that you're looking for. But it doesn't mean that the state is reading everyone's emails, nor would that conceivably be feasible. You say the state isn't reading everyone's emails, but people might fear they could be reading my emails. Well, I'd put the proposition the other way around. Would you really support a world in which it was not possible for the police and the intelligence agencies to find the communications of the terrorists and the proliferators and the criminals and the kidnappers? But can we trust the state? Technology allows it to do things it could never have done before, collecting and sifting through billions of records to find a connection or reconstructing a person's social interactions. The programmes are innovative and highly complex. And while there is a system of oversight and accountability, for instance every search has to be justified under the Human Rights Act, critics feel this system is not strong enough. The controls that exist at the moment, the commissioners and so on, frankly far, far too small. They couldn't conceivably check every intercept uh, 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 of the sort that Snowden exposed. It's simply not possible. The mechanism isn't there. You, so your theory is mission creep? That something which is justified in terms of national security is expanded into intruding into all our privacy? Well, yes, or the, or the scope to do so, yes, and, and the, the relatively unfettered scope to do so. Now, people keep turning around saying, oh, we're responsible people. Look, you know, I, I know some of the, the, the people in, involved in this, and they are decent, civilised people, but you know, the state simply shouldn't have these powers because one day they get used wrongly, you know, and uh, uh, by then it's too late. As well as processing vast amounts of data, the Snowden files also point to the intelligence agencies deliberately undermining some of the security protocols on the internet, like the process of encryption, with the goal of making it easier for them to gain access to data. For us, the um, revelations in early September that the NSA had had a major covert program to compromise internet security standards and products uh, were a 9-11 moment. Some leading computer security experts have been left outraged. They've spent decades trying to make sure people can communicate securely and privately over the internet. The goal of the NSA and GCHQ is to ensure that this is not the case, that they can break anybody's privacy at any time and that they can interfere with any transaction at any time. In order to do this, they have compromised in various ways many of the protocols on which the internet relies. Now, when you introduce these vulnerabilities, they're not just available for the spies to use, they're available for bad guys to use as well. The files confirm the scale of what's been built, but they also contain page after page of top secret information. For instance, GCHQ's work in supporting military operations overseas. So by making this material vulnerable to those who want to know Britain's secrets and in disclosing certain aspects of it, have Edward Snowden's actions compromised national security? Not even the KGB in its heyday of Philby and Burgess and Maclean in the 1950s could have dreamt of acquiring 58,000 <laughs> highly classified intelligence documents. My fear is that we're now going to witness a slow motion car crash in which gradually sources dry up, uh, targets such as terrorists uh, and, and cyber uh, criminals will work out what are the kind of capabilities uh, that we have and they will adapt their methods. It will be harder to track them down. The state has amassed enormous powers when it comes to interception and it's done so in secret. That concerns many who believe there needs to be more public knowledge about the state's capability and more consent to its use of those powers.
Secrecy is the antagonist of accountability, always is. Uh, it, sometimes you can't get around it. You know, you've got to have secret agencies, you've got to have spies, you've got to have ways of dealing with your enemies. Nobody disputes that. But you've also got to have in a free society uh, a way of keeping it under control, making sure it doesn't run away. They pushed it even further than we thought they would. Um, the surprising thing to us was that there appear to have been occasional pockets of competence within the NSA and GCHQ. Many of us had for many years thought the real secret was that, like other large public sector IT projects, it didn't work and there was really nobody there. But to find that they had built this machine and got it working was an eye-opener. The balance between secrecy and accountability is being shifted as a direct result of Snowden's disclosures. A senior US intelligence official acknowledged to me there would now have to be more transparency about the NSA's work. But as the public understands more about the powerful machine that's been built in secret, how far will it be confident that it's being used to keep us safe rather than spy on us?